it's the new Red Green Show! And now, here's the man who's made possum lodge where it is today. And still no apologies. Your host, my uncle, Red Green! Thank you very much, boy. This is a big day in the history of Possum Lake Road construction, I can tell you that, because they are finally getting around to fixing that bump at the top of the hill as you go into town. Boy, when I think of the number of things that have smashed up against the inside of the roof of my van. <laughs> well, what do, you, what do you got the eggs for? You going to Possum Lake Little Theater tonight? <laughs> no, Harold. I'm using these to test the bump. If I can drive over without cracking these babies, I'm gonna call it fixed. <laughs> Good idea. Wear old clothes. <laughs> Show Hap talks about his days as a whaler, and I don't mean in Hartford. And Harold and I do a weird thing. We change places. Don't worry, it's not permanent. Then I try to get Dougie Franklin to say a word that he hardly ever thinks of. Well, I gotta hand it to those road construction guys. They did take four hours to do a 15-minute job, but somewhere between leaning on the shovels and rolling their smokes, they managed to fix that bump. <laughs> However, I can't be so complimentary to the cops who are running the radar trap. <laughs> exactly how fast were you going? How fast were you going? Because tickets can be really expensive if you're going fast, and you can lose demerit points. They say anything about you losing demerit points? Sometimes they do that. You say anything about that? Twelve of them. <laughs> Twelve demerit points! Wow! I didn't even know the possum van could go that fast. No, 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 no. I lost three for speeding. I lost another three for the condition of the vehicle. And then I lost another three for driving with an obstructed view. Wait a sec, wait a sec, that's only nine points. Yeah, I lost another three for speeding on the way back. <laughs> they took the plates off the van and left her on the side of the road. They were gonna tow it away, but the chief thought it would make the police compound look bad. <laughs> oh, oh, this is so great, this is so great. Uncle Red has to go to driver's school. Uh, no, I don't, Harold. I just have to be retested, okay? But until then, I got no license and no wheels. And yet, you still have a spare tire. <laughs> you know, when you have a problem, it's nice to have friends. Or at least you'd think that, wouldn't you? The problem I have, I don't have my van. So Bill's suggesting maybe some other ways that I can get around. He's got this little scooter. Here. I'm sure he means well. He doesn't do well. All right, Bill, do you have any other ideas? Anything else in mind at all? Oh, good. <laughs> Well, you're into it right up to your big mouth this time, aren't you? No sooner do you start putting your brand new gas barbecue together. In you get stuck. Tab A won't fit in slot B. She passes by and she says, what do the instructions say? <laughs> now you're really stuck. Because you haven't read the instructions, have you? They're sealed in a little plastic bag that you're kneeling on. Time to think fast. Something you're not good at, or you wouldn't be cursing tab A. <laughs> Try saying you were trying to put it together with your eyes closed as a personal challenge. <laughs> to try and understand what it must feel like to be Stevie Wonder. This is as far as you got. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> or, uh, tell her you read something about a guy who got a barbecue from Taiwan. They made a mistake when they translated the instructions. The whole thing exploded. Yeah, but, but say someone got killed. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that way it sounds real. <laughs> and next time you get something like this, make sure you never get caught again, okay? First thing you do, find the instructions, throw them away. Yeah, <laughs> that way you can claim that it didn't come with any. And if there's another set in another language or something, you might want to hang on to them. Yeah, because you're going to need to look at those pictures later. <laughs> so easy to fool your senses. You can't believe what you see, but your nose knows the inside story and can't be tricked by the powers that be. So whenever you make a decision, take a whiff of the air like this. Because it may walk like a duck and talk like a duck, but if it smells kind of cheesy, it is. <laughs> go. Just uh, built a little craft table for the wife to kind of make up for the fact that I've lost my driver's license. Uh, we call that mercy furniture. But I thought I'd take handyman corner this week and uh, show you people how you can uh, get away and beat all them radar traps. 
and that way you can avoid uh, the embarrassment that I have to put up with, or at least some of it. <laughs> now, the way radar works is there's a beam that comes flying towards your car and bounces off something else in your car and heads back like crazy down to the cop car, comes up on a little screen there, tells him how much you're exceeding the speed limit by, and then he can pull you over and give you that $200 smile. <laughs> so if you want to control the radar trap, the first thing you have to control is what part of your car the radar is going to hit. See? Now, what we do there is uh, we take a little piece of foam here, or this could be, I guess, a box of chocolates or a box of cereal or any book by Dickens, and we're going to wrap that with wire, and then we're going to hook the wire up to this 9-volt battery. And that way, this is what will attract the radar, very similar to the technology they use in that stealth bomber, except in reverse. And a couple dollars cheaper, I believe. <laughs> there we go. I'll tell you something. This is going to attract every little piece of radar in your neighborhood. You're going to be picked up by ships at sea. <laughs> All right, now, here comes the tricky part. You don't just mount this on your car any old which way. This has to be secured on a moving belt, sort of like Moose Thompson's buckle. <laughs> now, I suppose you could go down to your grocery store and port the conveyor belt out of there while the manager's in the back getting you a fresher cabbage. But I prefer to use just an old piece of ladder and uh, some bed. <laughs> Bed sheeting. All right, now, as you can see, not only do I have the bed sheet running over the ladder, but she's also running over this piece of copper pipe, which you're going to need. You can get a piece of copper pipe right out of your own basement, but just remember to turn the water off first. Of course, that's easy to say now. <laughs> and if you look way down at the end of the piece of copper pipe, you're going to see I got a little hunk of uh, clothesline on there wrapped around a clothesline pulley. And the, the, actually, the beauty of uh, stealing a complete clothesline set is you get the two pulleys. <laughs> what am I going to do with the other pulley? I hoped you'd never ask. <laughs> you bolt it to the rear wheel of your favorite cruising vehicle. Then you take the clothesline, hook that onto the pulley, and then that goes up and attaches to our belt. Now, the way it works is when the car moves, that drives the pulley, and then the pulley comes along here, and then drives the belt, and that moves our radar attractor thingy, but in the opposite direction, this kind of a rig here, you see. So if you're going, like, say, 60 mile an hour in your car, well, the radar attractor is going 20 miles an hour backwards. So the radar reads it as 60 minus 20 is legal. <laughs> All right, we have, a, we have a problem here. Because when this thing comes around and goes underneath, it's going to jam up against the roof. Well, I need something to raise to raise the ladder up. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. Right. oh. Tell you what, this craft table would be perfect. It didn't have a top on it. That's the beauty of just using one nail. <laughs> Perfect. All right, we got her up on a jack here so that we can demonstrate. Oh, my gosh, we missed the most important part. You got to have a twist in this, otherwise they're going to be going in the same direction, which will, in fact, double your speed. You're going to get a ticket for doing 120. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's give her a try. And that's working perfect. Oh, 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 just thought of something. Now, this is real important. You don't want to go messing around with the ratios of the pulleys, OK? Otherwise, what could happen is you're going 60 miles an hour forward. Meanwhile, the radar thing is going 60 miles an hour backward. The cop will pull you over and give you a ticket for parking on the freeway. <laughs> so until next time, remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> this is not charades. Stay tuned for Garth and his snake. don't have a car, you really find out who your friends are. Lodge members teasing you? Oh, Harold, I can't take it from old man Sedgwick. He's blind, he's deaf, he's got the reflexes of a houseplant. <laughs> he's driving around in a 60-foot motorhome. He's a menace at the wheel. He's asleep at the wheel, Harold, is what he is. <laughs> here, ask me a few questions out of the driver handbook here. All righty, Rue. What is the correct procedure for stopping at a stop sign? A, stopping at the sign, or B, stopping at the corner? Well, if nobody's coming, I usually slow down to around 40. Unless my horn's broken. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I'll mark that as C. I have no idea, and I just failed the test. <laughs> Did you even read the handbook, Uncle Red? You seen the size of the print in there, Harold? Well, maybe you need glasses. My eyes are fine, thank you very much. How many fingers am I holding up? Better be more than one. <laughs> <laughs> you need glasses for driving. You do. Well, I got no way of getting to the eye, Dr. Harold. The guys are all out on the lake. 
Well, I have my license. All you have to do is ask. <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Harold, are you driving the eye doctor, please? Okay, sure. Oh. <laughs> Great. All right, what vehicle are we taking? Well, I said I have my license. I didn't say I have a vehicle. You want to ride on the handlebars or the rat trap? <laughs> you know you hear a lot of talk about power saws, but I'll tell you, a handsaw, if it's sharp, is just as effective. All you got to do, cut a little notch in your wood and cut a notch on the other side. Try to match it up as close as you can. And then just very quickly, finish off your cut. <laughs> Remember, any tool can be the right tool. <laughs> Okay, this is the big one. The grand prize is for over a hundred dollars. <laughs> Less expenses and all that sort of stuff. So, okay, Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to make Mr. Franklin say this word. <laughs> 30 seconds and go. All right, uh, masculine. Chuck Norris. <laughs> Opposite. Willard Scott. <laughs> Woman. Maintenance. <laughs> Perfect woman. Expensive. <laughs> now, you, know, you, know, you, you see a woman, she's small, she's petite, she's very pretty. You say she's very... Very... not from around here. <laughs> You're running out of time, Uncle Red. Well, I can't think of anything else to say Well, you just better say something. You're just sitting there. Well, I don't there. know what to well, say. You're sitting there. Say something. Say something. Anything. <laughs> Uh, all right, Harold. Feminine. Garth Harville here, animal control, with another lesson in wildlife management. Come on in here, Red. What'd you do to your leg there, Garth? You're walking a little bit funny. Oh, I had a little, little bit of a run-in with a caribou down at the animal control center. Wow. I had to take one for the team, Red. <laughs> Oh, 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 I forgot something. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, I... Wow, <laughs> looks like it was kind of a short caribou, Garth. No, 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 no. I was standing on my desk. <laughs> okay, today, we're talking about snakes. Oh, boy. Now, a lot of civilians are afraid of snakes, you see. Yeah. But we in the AC uniform know that snakes are basically harmless. Unless, of course, you step in their nest. <laughs> boy, I'll, I'll never forget that trip to the hospital. Oh, boy. I had so much poison in me, I... I didn't think I could keep the truck on the road. <laughs> hey, what I do, I just stay away from snakes. Thanks very much. You don't like animals, do you, Red? Well, not as much as life, no. <laughs> what, what, the, what are you doing? What is that? What are you doing? What is that? What are you... What... This means snake. Oh, my gosh. It's snake a around. standard hand signal. All right. Yeah. Wow. Now, I... I think we have an authentic... Mississauga Rattler, right here. <laughs> All I have to do is grab him around the head with this snake ball. Got him! Whoa! 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 Oh, boy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. He's a big one. Oh, oh, oh. Right, settle down there. Oh, he's got an attitude. Okay. I've got a burlap bag up in the porch. I'm gonna go put him in that. All right. All right. Okay. Whoa! Boy, Garth, you know, I, I think you got him by the tail there. Huh? You got him by the tail. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Oh, 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 another super day. Oh. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise, the bump in the road is back and it's bigger and better than ever. <laughs> what? Nothing. when they fixed the bump, everybody started speeding so much into town that they decided to put a speed bump in there. Huh? A really big one. Yeah. Okay, okay, I owe you one. You owe me another one, Harold. And this time, I'm going to collect. I want you to go down there and pretend you're me. Oh, uh, at the eye doctor? No, no, the license office. I want you to take the test for me. We've got the same last name, the same address. As long as you don't tell them your IQ, they'll think you're me. Well, I guess the bell fell off. I hope the bell fell off. <laughs> so Bill's still looking for other... Oh. Bill's still looking for other ways that I can get around 
Okay, there we go. I'll help you a bit. <laughs> like I say, that's what friends are for. So we, uh, this is the skateboard thing. They're very popular with the young people and so on. Uh, imagine there's something. No, I'm not interested, Bill. You go ahead. Not that much to it, I wouldn't think. But uh, what? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Where's that going? Okay, uh, that's not going to work out all that well. What, oh, okay, now he's got the inline skate. This is a new thing. Inline skate, it's got all the padding on there. He wanted me to help him get that. He's having trouble getting that. Oh. oh. Uh, I lost a little bit of patience here. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, there, that, okay. Now, uh, the thing with the inline skates, I believe it's, it's like ice skating. Yeah, it's really a question of balance. I don't think it's so much strength. It's just more of a, you know, sort of a natural athletic ability. And uh, obviously, it takes a little, I guess it takes a little while to get, uh, to get up. You know, uh, when you start thinking about how short life is, there he goes. All right, use that technique. No, I, I mean, oh, what's this? Skateboard and inline skates. And what's, okay, all right. I don't think I want to get, what are you doing, Bill? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I see. Hitchhiking. <laughs> well, that makes sense. You go ahead, Bill. I'll wait here. <laughs> Coming up, Harold is going to impersonate me. Look at the gut on him. Well, you know, sometimes you do get a glimpse of justice in this life. Old man Cedric was so busy razzing me about my license, he drove his motor home through a stand of pine trees, ripped the side mirror right off, <laughs> which he won't even notice till he looks in it, which is never. <laughs> and Harold has agreed to go down and take the driving test for me as a way of securing his pay. Harold, come on in. <laughs> I guess after I pass the test, though, I'm going to have to sign the organ donation card. What? What? Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm not donating any organs, Harold. What happens if I get up to heaven without my kidneys and there's an open bar? <laughs> well, uh, I'd call that a bit of a setback, I guess. <laughs> Don't do that, Harold. Uh, Don't do what? No. Stop calling me Harold. Just get down and get my license, will you, Harold, please? All right. Keep your stick in the ice. <laughs> Hi there, Ranger Gord again. Here's an interesting piece of wildlife lore. During the mating season, during the season when they're in heat, animals will claw the trees to mark their territory. Bears do it, uh, badgers do it, so do wolves. But these markings here aren't from any of those. These are. <laughs> well, I'm only human. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the show. On this week's expert portion of the show, we have two experts, my Uncle Red and his good friend, water taxi captain, Mr. Hop Shaughnessy. <laughs> And this week's letter goes as follows. Oh, cool. Ha, it's got a nautical theme. <laughs> He's a thing. All right, dear experts, how can I help protect the whales? Oh, man. All right, all right. That's all I got to tell you something, okay? I don't, really, I don't get this. I hear a lot about this lately. Okay, you got an animal here. This thing's 100 feet long, all right? Weighs about 1,000 tons. Now, if this thing can't take care of itself, really, <laughs> I don't know what I can do for them, you know? No, Red, Harold, Harold is talking about whaling. Oh. You know, we gotta, we got to agree to stop killing the whales. Oh, all right, fine. All right, the next time I see a whale in Possum Lake, I'm just going to back right off. <laughs> and then I'll tell you what else. I'll, I'll speak to Bernice and get her and her friends to just ease off on the whaling activities. <laughs> Uncle Red, just because nobody you know is killing whales doesn't mean it's not happening. You can't assume things aren't happening just because lodge members don't do it. Yeah. I guess I'm the fella you're looking for, Harold. I was a whaler at one time. <laughs> Never a professional, not like them big Japanese ships, you know. I was, no, I was more of a sport whaler. <laughs> I went out in the canoe, you know. <laughs> a 20-footer, a big one. Yeah, sounds like a big one. <laughs> Mr. Shanti, how'd you get one of those big harpoon guns in a canoe? A harpoon gun? Hell no. Where's the sport in that? No, no, no. I just, I just wrap a rope around myself and I dive in, I grab onto his tail and I'd hang on and I'd wear him down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> it was a battle of endurance, me against the whale. It wasn't easy. Did you ever see the tails on those things? They're incredible. <laughs> well, incredible tails be right up your alley, I would say. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Shaughnessy, how long did it take you to wear this whale down? Uh, 10, 20 months. Oh. <laughs> Me out there thrashing around, hanging on for a year or more. And I tell you, began to hate the taste of seafood. <laughs> All except the stingray, you know, they're, they're, their little toes are a delicacy. <laughs> Uh, that whale would collapse, and I'd tow it into shore, and all the people in that village would have enough blubber for the year. Oh, uh, Mr. Shaughnessy, that is a lot of blubber. <laughs> yeah, I gave it up after I tried to do battle with the great white whale, Moby Richard. I think you mean Moby Dick. No, I didn't know him that well. Well... <laughs> It's not fair, Uncle Red. I could have passed that test easy. Well, you didn't, Harold. Well, it's not my fault. Your beer belly is the one that got stuck in the steering wheel and I drove the tester's car right through Murray's fruit stand. <laughs> what? Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. oh, those stems really hurt. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. If they think that you're me, do I get blamed for this fruit fiasco? <laughs> no, no. My beard went flying off. I got hit by a flying kiwi. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I had to tell him who I really was. Old man Sedgwick. <laughs> that, his license has been permanently revoked. Oh, <laughs> that is excellent work. Harold. Well, thank you very much. Thanks to me, the road is a safer place to be. <laughs> and thanks to me, don't count on it. I got my license back. Huh? Well, you were in there and making fruit salad with that Toyota. I went down to the courtroom and I went in there and I blamed the whole mess on the bump. And the judge agreed with me. He hated the bump too. And then he pointed to a lump on his head where his hair used to be. <laughs> yeah, so I got my license back. And as soon as I get my van back, I'll be a complete man again. How sad. Yeah. Oh, meaning time. Yeah. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I gotta get some watermelon pits out of my undies. <laughs> well, you're on your own there, Harold. <laughs> So if my wife is watching, got the license back, maybe what do you say you and I go for a little moonlit drive down by the lake, eh? a little romantic spot where we can park, and don't worry, I'll take everything nice and slow. I can't afford any more demerit points. <laughs> and to the rest of you, thanks so much for watching. On behalf of myself and whoever that was, and all the guys up here at Post Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.